Once upon a time there was a boy named Frider and a girl named Katherlesian. They got married and lived in the happiness of young husband and wife. Frider once said to his wife, I and number 39 am going to Katherlesian fields now. When I come back from the fields, remember to have something fried to quench my hunger, and something to drink to quench my thirst. And quat, go ahead, dear Mr. Frider, and quat, replied Katherlesian. It was almost time for lunch. The wife took sausages hanging near the chimney, took a pan and put it on the stove to heat it, then put the sausages and butter in the pan. She suddenly thought, while waiting for the sausage to fry, we could go down to the cellar to get beer. She immediately took the jar down to the cellar to get beer. While drinking beer, Katherlesian suddenly thought, I forgot to leash the dog. It can ruin fried sausages. Luckily I still remember. She quickly stepped up and the dog was frying the sausage. Katherlesian did not give up, she chased the dog into the field. But the dog ran faster than Katherlesian, he also refused to give up the delicious bait, just ran across the field. Katherlesian said, if you lose it, that and number 39, s it. Katherlesian was tired and out of breath so she lazily walked home, breathing as she walked. Rushing up, Katherlesian forgot to turn the stopcock on the beer barrel. While Katherlesian was chasing the dog, the beer kept flowing, filling the jar and then spilling all over the basement floor. When Katherlesian arrived home and went down to the basement, there were only empty barrels and beer flowing all over the basement floor. She lamented, that and number 39. That's all there is to say. What should I do now so that Frider doesn't and hash 39? T know about this. She thought and suddenly remembered that she still had a bag of flour from last year and number 39, S Village Festival. She took down the bag of flour and sprinkled it all over the basement floor. While doing so, she said, Anyone who knows how to save can have it and use it when needed. While sprinkling flour, Katherlesian kicked the beer jar, causing it to spill all over the floor. So some of Frider and number 39's beer also dripped onto the floor. Katherlesian consoled herself, it and number 39's the same thing, so it must go together. After sprinkling all over the basement floor, Katherlesian was extremely happy to have finished the job. She thought to herself, looks clean too. At noon, Frider came home and said, hey, have you cooked anything yet? The wife said, dear Mr. Frider, I fried sausage for you, but while I was collecting beer in the basement, the dog took away the fried sausage. I chased the dog and the beer spilled out all over the box onto the floor. I sprinkled flour to keep the floor from getting muddy, while struggling. While trying to sprinkle the powder, I knocked over the whole bottle of beer. Do not worry. The floor is dry now. Frider said, Katherlesian, Katherlesian, you shouldn't and hash 39. T have poured the bag of good flour on the floor. Just let the dogs fry the sausage, and the beer will be gone. What a waste of a bag of delicious, smooth flour. Yes, dear Mr. Frider, I didn't and hash 39. T know it was a delicious, smooth powder. I should have told you in advance. The husband thought, if my wife is wandering around like that, we have to keep an eye on her. For a long time, he had saved up some money, he converted it into gold, then told his wife, Look, I will put these yellow coins in a pot and bury them at the foot of the barn pole. 
Don and number 39. T go near there. Otherwise you and number 39. LL be miserable. The wife replied, Dear Mr. Frider, no, I would never do that. While Frider was away, a few junk buyers came to ask to buy scraps. The wife said, Oh, you guys, there and number 39. S nothing in the house to buy or sell, only a few yellow coins, I wonder if they can be used. Why not? Just take those yellow coins and see them. So just go to the cow barn, dig under the cow barn pole and you and number 39. LL see yellow coins. I and number 39 am not allowed to go there. The cunning scrap metal collectors went there to dig and found pure gold and quickly left the village, leaving behind burdens of scrap metal and new kettles to exchange for old and worn items. Catherlesian looked at the piles of bottles and scraps and thought, I also need some things. But when she entered the kitchen and saw that there was enough, Catherlesian broke all the clay pots from the piles of bottles and scraps and stuck them in the fence around the house. When he got home, Frider saw something strange in the fence around the house and asked his wife, Catherlesian, what are you doing in the fence around the house that in number 39, s so strange? Change the bottles, dear Mr. Frider. Change the yellow coins at the base of the barn pole. I and number 39, am not going there. There are only cicadas out there digging. Frider said, oh my God, my wife. What are you doing? Those are not yellow coins, but pure gold, our family and number 39's entire fortune. Whose life is like that? The wife said, yes, dear Mr. Frider, I didn't and hash 39. Tino it was pure gold. You should have warned me first. Standing hesitantly for a moment, Catherlesian said, listen to me, dear Mr. Frider. I will get that gold back. Now let and number 39, S run after those robbers. Frider said, that and number 39, S good. Let and number 39, S just try it. Remember to bring butter, bread and cheese along the way to have something to eat. Yes, dear Mr. Frider, let me pack it and take it with me. The couple set out to chase. The husband walked faster, his wife followed closely behind. Wife thought, when we returned, Frider was behind. Then the two came to a mountain. Both sides of the road have rails that are visibly deeply corroded. Catherlesian muttered, if the wheels keep running over the track like this, it will never be smooth again. Catherlesian felt pity for the tracks so she took out butter and spread it with her hand on the tracks to make the wheels run smoothly. While I was busy buttering the railroad tracks, a piece of cheese fell out and rolled down to the foot of the mountain. Catherlesian said, I went from down there to here, I won and number 39, T come down again. Let the other piece of cheese come down and pull you up. Then Catherlesian let another piece of cheese roll down the mountain. Not seeing any more cheese, Catherlesian dropped another piece and thought, maybe they were waiting for each other to go in groups, not alone. Not seeing any cheese or more, Catherlesian said, I wonder what they think. Maybe the last piece of cheese got lost, I and number 39, LL send the fourth piece down to call it up. Even on the fourth piece, there was no sign of anything. Annoyed, Catherlesian dropped the fifth, then the sixth. So there and number 39, S no cheese left. Catherlesian stood waiting, listening, maybe they would pull each other up. 
After waiting for a long time and not seeing them come up, Catherlesian said, Oh my God, this army will be the same until they die. Just stay there, do you? Think I and number 39, am still waiting? We still have to go our own way. They can fly and chase us, so there and number 39, as nothing to fear with strong legs. Catherlesian continued and found Frider waiting. Frider was hungry so he said, let a number 39, s open the food, I and number 39, am hungry. Catherlesian gave the dry bread, Frider asked, where are the butter and cheese? The wife replied, oh my God, dear Mr. Frider, I and number 39, they wiped out the tracks. Cheese is coming. A piece fell out of the bag and rolled down the mountain. I gave another piece to call back. Frider said, Catherlesian, no one would butter the railway tracks and let the cheese roll down the mountain. Yes, dear Mr. Frider, you should have warned me first. The couple sat down to eat empty bread. Suddenly remembering, her husband asked, Catherlesian, did you lock the door when you left? Not yet. You should have warned me first. Then I and number 39, LL go home and lock the door carefully. Remember to bring some food. I wait here. Then we continued on our way. Catherlesian returned home. She thought, Frider probably dozen and hash 39. Tea like butter and cheese, so let and number 39. S. Bring dried apples and a jar of vinegar. Then Catherlesian locked the upper compartment of the door. The lower compartment was removed and hung on her shoulder. Catherlesian thought she had locked it carefully. Now she could just go at her leisure, and Frider could sit and rest even more. When she saw her husband again, Catherlesian said, Here, dear Mr. Frider. Here is the door, keep it. Oh my God, who in their lifetime would have had such a precious wife? The top of the door is carefully locked. The bottom of the door is removed to allow anything to enter the house. It and number 39, s too late now, how can I go home? Well, since I brought it here, I and number 39, LL continue to carry it. Let me carry the door, dear Mr. Frider. I and number 39. LL hang the dried apples and vinegar on the door and he and number 39. LL carry them for us. The couple went into the forest to look for the scammers, but found no one. It was dark. The couple climbed a tree, planning to sleep overnight in the tree. The couple had just climbed up the tree when the other scammers also arrived. Tired from the long journey, they sat down to rest right under the tree, then lit a fire to divide the donkey and number 39's loot. Frider moved to another tree, dropped to the ground to pick up rocks, then climbed up the tree and threw rocks at the scammers, but didn't and hash 39t hit anyone. The scammers heard the sound of rustling and said, Maybe it and number 39. S about dawn. The wind is blowing so hard that there are too many pine cones falling. Catherlesian was still carrying the door on her shoulder. Holding it for too long made her shoulder hurt. She thought, perhaps it was because of the bag of dried apples. She said, Dear Mr. Frider, I and number 39. LL throw the bag of dried apples away. Frider replied, No, Catherlesian, not now, it will be exposed. God, dear Mr. Frider, my shoulder hurts so much, I have to throw it away. Well, throw it down. Damn you, damn it. Then the dried apples fell with a clatter. The scammers thought it was bird droppings. 
Cather Lishan still felt a pain in her shoulder so she said, Oh my god, dear Frider, I have to empty the vinegar jar. No, Cather Lishan, you can and number 39. T do that, it will be exposed. God, dear Mr. Frider, my shoulder hurts so much, I have to let it go. Well, throw it away. Damn you damn it. Catherlesian poured down the jar of vinegar, and the vinegar splashed. All over the scammers. They said to each other, too much dew falls at night. Now that Catherlesian thought about it, it was the door that was pressing on her shoulder. And quat, dear Mr. Frider, and quat, she said, and quat, I must throw away the door. And quat, no, Catherlesian, not now, it will be exposed. God, dear Mr. Frider, my shoulder hurts so much, I have to throw it down here. No, Catherlesian, hold on tight. God, dear Mr. Frider, my shoulder hurts so much. I have to throw it down. Frider got angry. Well, throw it down. Damn you damn it. The door fell with a thud to the ground. The scammers thought, it and number 39, s true that the devil jumped from the tree. So they ran away, leaving everything behind. Early the next morning, the couple climbed down from the tree and found the bag of gold. The couple brought the gold home. Coming home, Frider told his wife, Catherlesian, now you have to work hard. Yes, dear Mr. Frider, I will do everything. Let me go to the fields and chop things to dry. Going out into the field, Catherlesian thought to herself, Eat and then chop, or should I take a nap and then chop? Well, let a number 39, S eat first. So Catherlesian took out the food to eat. When she was full, she felt sleepy and just dozed off, so she chopped it into her clothes. When she fully woke up, she looked at herself and saw someone as tattered as a nest of leeches. She asked herself, I wonder if it and number 39, s me or not. When it was dark when we got home, Catherlesian stood at the window and called, Dear Frider. Ask what? May I ask, is Catherlesian home? Frider replied, Yes, there is a house. She is sleeping. And quat, good, so we and number 39, re at home, and quat. Catherlesian said. Then she left again. Catherlesian met those scammers, they planned to steal. She said, I will lend a hand. The scammers were assured that the woman would show them where they hid their money. Coming to the front of the house, Catherlesian said loudly, Do you know anything? We came to steal. The scammers wanted to break up with Catherlesian, so they said, Come on, let a number 39. S go to the field at the beginning of the village and pull up sugar beets. Catherlesian went to the field at the beginning of the village and pulled out the radishes, but she only nonchalantly lifted the radishes halfway up. A man passed by, stood looking and thought, Maybe the devil is playing with sugar beets. That person ran back to the village and told the parish pastor, Father, outside the church field there is a devil digging for radishes. The pastor replied, One of my legs is paralyzed, I can and number 39, T go out there to chase it away. The man said, Let me carry you out there. When the two of them reached the field, Catherlesian pulled the radishes, causing the soil to scatter. The pastor cried, Oh my God, it and number 39, s really a devil. So they both ran away. While too scared, the paralyzed leg flexed normally so the pastor ran faster than the other man. 
Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.